I would like to use this Eiffel Tower image later in the lecture, so I'm going to undo my changes. You can either do Edit Undo a bunch of times or choose File and then Revert, and then we'll go back to your last saved version. And then we'll jump back to the slideshow and keep moving on with our selections. And so again, you're not really going to use a single row or single column selection too much, but it's there if you decide that you want to use it. Um, the elliptical and rectangular marquee tools are fun to create big, wide areas of selections. And you could use this to create borders in your document, as I did in the example here. Or you could just use it to isolate an area for editing so that you don't accidentally edit something that's further out. And so right where we found the single row and the single column marquee tools, in Photoshop, if you push and hold that, you'll see the rectangular and the elliptical marquee tools. If we take the same image that we've been working on and we push and hold on the tools panel and let me zoom in so you can see that. If we push and hold on the tools panel, the second item down in my version of Photoshop, I can choose the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to demonstrate the elliptical marquee tool, but they work the same exact way. One makes a rectangle, one makes an oval or an ellipse. If I was trying to create some sort of artistic border for this picture, maybe I wanted to do what's called a vignette or a faux vignette or just kind of um, a border inspired by a vignette, you can click and drag to make a selection. And if you don't like what you get, you can always just click to deselect and you can start over. could even just start in the corner and drag from corner to corner and then you'll get the biggest selection possible that goes from side to side. I don't want that because I want a little bit of a border. And so maybe I'll go in about a half inch, visually on my screen, about a half inch on each corner. And then I'll click and drag. And when I come down to the bottom corner, whoops, well, don't let go of your selection. When I click and drag and come down to the bottom corner, I'm just going to make sure I'm about the same distance away from the corner. And then I should have a selection that is in proportion um, on all four sides of the image. And so now that I have this selection made, I could do a number of things for editing. First, I would recognize that only what's inside the selection um, could be used for editing. So if I wanted to create a border on the outside, I would have to choose Select and Inverse. And now, it doesn't look too much different, but if you zoom in on it, you'll see that your marching ants, your marquee, they go all around the oval in the middle plus around the outside. And so I'm going to fill this, Edit Fill. Whoops, make sure you always duplicate your background layer. On the duplicated layer, I'm going to choose Edit Fill and fill it with a color just so you can see what part of the image I have selected currently. So I have the outside portion. And you could use that to add a border. This could be your border for your picture. You could apply some layer effects like um, we learned about in previous lectures. So this doesn't look so great because it's an oval, but you you could come through and you could do different things with your selection. What I'm going to do is a little trick with what are called levels. We'll learn about levels in chapter 12 and so this is just a little peek about what we'll do in chapter 12. But if you look on your layers panel, at the bottom of the panel there is a circle that is half white and half black. It kind of reminds me of a black and white cookie um, that are popular in New York City. If you push and hold that, they're what are called adjustment layers and if you were to select this um, it would allow you to make an adjustment to the layer, in this case the background copy layer because that's what's selected. And, and if you were to choose this, let's choose black and white for now, um, it would apply a change to your image. And you can't really see because the contrast is not there, but around the outside of my image, whoops, but around the outside of my image, it's now black and white and the inside is color. I'm going to undo that. The option I want to choose right now is Levels. It's kind of one of my favorite ones to create contrast. When you create a Levels adjustment, you have to choose how much of the level you're going to change. And so when I created the what is called an adjustment layer on the background layer, I'm sorry, the background copy layer, um, it opened the Properties panel. And so with the property panel open, I'm going to look at these sliders. So on the left, this represents the dark part of the image or how much of the image is the darkest black in the image. On the right, it represents white or how much of the image is the whitest white of the image. For this adjustment, I'm concerned with all the mid-tones. I want to slide them. I want to make them all darker or I want to make them all lighter. And so what, watch what happens as I slide this to the right. That border is going to get darker. 
kind of like the way that looks, I'm not going to lie. Um, and if I slide it to the left, it will get lighter and it will cause contrast. In this case, with this particular image, it actually looks better if I make the background darker. And so now I have the full image, I can still see the whole Eiffel Tower, but I was able to make the adjustment. And the only reason I was able to make this adjustment just on the outside of that circle is because I made a selection and then I inverted the selection so the active area of it was the outside. You can also use it to delete content. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose revert. And then I'm going to make a new selection. Do the same thing we did before, just make an oval. Um, and maybe now I want to keep the border, but I want to get rid of the inside. And so right now the inside is selected. And so if you I'll have to duplicate our background again, and then I'm going to turn the actual background off or else you won't see anything change. Um, what I could do is I could use this to create a border that has the Eiffel Tower in it, but I'll get rid of the middle. Maybe I'm going to put text or something in there. And so you could do like Command X to cut, or you could delete and do different things. And then you could delete the content in the middle. We could come back and create another layer. I'm going to do Command A to select all, and we could fill that with a solid color. And I'm going to use a little dropper to grab maybe this color. And then now I have a border that I could use and I could put some sort of text on the inside. This image may not have been the best one to do that with, but it's an option when you're using the, um, the geometric selection tools.